The psychological concept of cognitive dissonance describes to a T nearly every American citizen's relationship to the political system. The dichotomy between the constantly disingenuous rhetoric that the government is working for the people clashes with our experience that the people are working for the elites, pulling the strings behind the government. British-born economist, historian, and writer Anthony Sutton observed in 1976 that ostensibly in the American political system, the center of political power, as authorized by the U.S. Constitution, is with an elected Congress and an elected president, working within the framework and under the constraints of a Constitution as interpreted by an unbiased Supreme Court. We have in the past assumed that political power is consequently carefully exercised by the executive and legislative branch after due deliberation and assessment of the wishes of the electorate. In fact, nothing could be further from this assumption. The electorate has long suspected, but now knows, that political promises are worth nothing. Lies are the order of the day for policy implementers. Wars are started and stopped with no shred of coherent explanation. Political words have never matched political deeds. Why not? Apparently, because the center of political power has been elsewhere than with elected and presumably responsive representatives in Washington. And this power elite has its own objectives, which are inconsistent with those of the public at large. Here, we defer to a portion of a speech given by and a portion of an interview with Senator Mike Gravel, former Speaker of the Alaskan House of Representatives and former two-term Senator from the state of Alaska. From his personal experience, Senator Gravel levels with us about how foolish it is to expect any elected official to work for the common good in our system of representative government. Senator Gravel cites four facts of political reality that make it impossible for an office holder to stand for the common good. I want to explain two things about an elected official, and it's very important in my mind to understanding the difference between democracy in a direct sense and representative government. When I stand for election, I turn to my constituency, and you've heard these speeches, and vote for me, I'm going to help you, we're going to do great things for this community, I'm going to get some money, we're going to build some roads, we're going to get a better airport, all the people are just applauding you, carrying you down the street, and you get elected. The first thing you do is you go back and you try to get into the larder and get the money and come back and give it to your people. 535 human beings have no other mission but to do that. So what are they doing? I'm bribing you. I'm saying, vote for me and I'll get you more money than you can get from that other guy. And I get elected because I bring home the bacon. I don't care where I take it from. Now, that's the bribery issue instrumental in getting elected. Then, as an elected official, the first thing that comes to my mind when you're about to make a decision is how does this affect my life? How does this affect my getting reelected? Next thing that comes to mind is how does this affect the people who put the money up to get me here and keep me here? The next thing that comes to mind is how does this affect my party? Because when my party's in power, I'm in power. Now after all of that, I've got my own ideology that boxes me in. And so, after the fourth barrier, now I'm free to attend to the public interest. That's the person who holds the agency that you elect to public office. Edwards has certainly been talking more uh aggressively oh, yeah. about yeah. taking on corporate America. Oh, yeah. Well, tell me how you can do that. Well, I, I'm not no, I mean, with yeah, what, how, do you, how do you do that? I don't know how to do that. Hmm. I, I know if I can empower the American people that they can sustain some policies that I would do that. The corporate well, there, person... Certainly there are laws Congress could pass. I mean, a president working oh, with Congress... Oh, Congress could do a good job, theoretically, but it can't.
Why? It's owned lock, stock, and barrel by corporate America. So you think you're going to become president, and you're going to turn to the Congress and say, let's really straighten out corporate America. I mean, this is foolishness. It's fantasy. But it sounds good on the stump. I could make that kind of a speech. Oh, man, just listen to me. What am I going to do to corporate America? You can't believe. And I know a lot about corporate personhood and proclab and all of that. But so what? But but the the, the in in a campaign like this, if someone has a potential of winning and, and makes some kind of promises, they, they, in theory they can mean something. Um, in theory, what it means is you're a hypocrite. That's what it means in theory. Because if you're smart enough to know you can deliver and you tell them you can deliver, what are you doing? You're raising expectations and well, you're lying to the people. We, or you're too dumb to know you're lying to the people. And, and the worst thing a leader can do is raise expectations and they don't happen. You create a whole new generation of cynics. As Senator Gravel makes clear, the dysfunction in the American government cannot be remedied by working within the confines of representative democracy because we have learned from our practical experience that representative democracy degenerates into an aristocracy of wealth. It is unreasonable to continue to expect a political system designed for an agrarian society prior to the Industrial Revolution to work in a post-industrial 21st century world. Modern communications technology has allowed us to see that not only are our representatives not smarter, wiser, or of higher character than the general public, but unlike the general public, are merely, for the most part, paid henchmen for the political elite. It is a spectacle of absurdity for 535 people, or five justices on a Supreme Court, or one president, to collectively make the laws for over 300 million people, especially when lawmakers represent lobbyists and campaign contributors, not the constituents they claim to represent. The political system of representative democracy is undeniably obsolete and irreparable because our experience has proven it is neither representative nor democratic. Direct democracy. Let the people vote. We do not have a representative form of government. Only little kiddies in high school believe that one. The only people our representatives represent are the very powerful, the very rich, and the special interests. That's who they do their carrying for. So what we're saying on major issues, be it war, education, health care, the budget, whatever it might be, critical issues, direct democracy, let the people vote. And we can do it online. Online? But my gosh, there could be fraud. Oh yeah, like there's none now? This could be totally transparent. And if you could bank online, you could vote online. This to us is the greatest revolution that could happen worldwide. Look what we have, a gang of 535 running this country. 535 people, a cavalcade of clowns. The Republicans and the Democrats making life and death issues for us.